Hello FlossTube and welcome to my channel. I'm Ros Clark. This is Ros Clark Craft. You can find me here on YouTube, over on Instagram and in my Etsy shop. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. I've been excited to see since my last video, my subscriber numbers just creeping and now we're definitely over 400. So it's, I don't know whether other people have this. I definitely have the you know, I'll get a notification that someone's subscribed, but then I'll look and the subscriber numbers have actually gone down by one. I like to think those are all bots. Don't uh, disabuse me of that. They might be real people who are just like, she's so boring and she doesn't post often enough and she doesn't stitch the things I want. Um, but I like to think that they are just bots whose accounts have been uh, disabled. And so the actual subscriber numbers are going up. We are well over 400 now. And uh, it may take a little while, but when we get to 500, there is going to be a giveaway. I am collecting things. Uh, I collected a few things in the last couple of weeks that are going to go in the 500 subscriber giveaway. So if you are a subscriber and you're thinking of giving up, stay tuned because there may be something in it for you. Now, I did film this video last week, last Saturday. I It took about two hours the actual footage was about two hours long it was very incoherent very chaotic i don't know what i was talking about most of the time so i don't really think you would have done and then it was so long that i couldn't upload it so i think it is probably better for everyone that that video has been consigned to oblivion this week's video this week's attempt at a video i'm hoping will be nearer my normal sort of length and that it might be vaguely comprehensible we'll have to see so one of the things i had tried to do was a bit of a recap of stitch in london i'm not going to try i'm honestly it was two weeks ago I, I can barely remember what i was doing yesterday so the thought of trying to remember what i was doing two weeks ago is non is a bit of a non-starter and that's partly why the video was so incoherent because I kept thinking oh and I, so I need to tell you about this and oh this doesn't make sense because I didn't tell you about that and oh I forgot anyway it was all over it if you would like to know what Stitch in London was like I highly recommend uh, So Me Sarah has done a lovely recap uh, Sally at Flossy Sews and Grows has done a lovely recap other people have talked about it a bit as well um, so you know you can find out it was great, is the, the short answer. I do have some thank yous that I want to include. Um, so obviously, huge thank you to Marie from Stitches and Diamonds for organising the whole thing and making it run so brilliantly. I know Marie was quite stressed at various points during the weekend, but honestly, from the point of view of those of us who were there and stitching, it was great. It was it was just great. Um, but I really want to say a particular thank you to Mr. Marie, uh, who went above and beyond in all kinds of ways to make it happen. But in particular, thank you, Gunter, for taking Charlie for a walk for me. Um, that's not really uh, normal customer service. And I really appreciated it. Uh, and so did Charlie. Charlie had... Did he have a lovely weekend? He had an OK weekend, I think. It wasn't quite the weekend I had planned for him. There were issues with my accommodation that I will not bore you with. If you were at the weekend, I'm sure you already heard all the boring information about that. We didn't end up in the accommodation I had planned and it wasn't quite as good for Charlie. He's very good at spending time in the car, but he spent a lot more time in the car than I would have ideally liked. Uh, lots of people got to come meet him and everybody agreed. I think that he is the best dog in the world. I, I think that was the general consensus. Um, you know, one or two people tried to make claims for their dogs, but they were clearly wrong, so we didn't listen. Um, yeah, so it, it was all good, right? I'm already in the coherent mode. Who have I thanked? Marie and Gunter, thank you. Um, huge thank you. At genuinely highlights of my weekend were always the moments where somebody was stitching or had been stitching on one of my charts. I cannot tell you how happy and excited and proud that makes me feel. Um, so in particular, Sarah, who quite often comments on my videos here and also over on Instagram, she has stitched, I knew she had stitched all of my seasonal jack charts, but she brought all of her finishes, um, not all of them fully finished, but she brought all of her finishes 
uh, at Sits of London. It's the first time I've never done that with mine because I've always made mine up into things, laid out all four together. So I did take a picture and hopefully I still have it and I will put it there. I just, that was really exciting to see. Other people have done that. Thank you particularly to Annette who came and uh, showed me pictures. She's finished all the single ladies and she started I Prefer Reading. So that was really exciting. Claire stitched the seasonal jacks and also was at Stitch in London last year. So she's also stitched uh, the Stitch in London uh, jack pattern from last year. I can't remember if there's anybody else. One or two others as well, I think. But genuinely, if you are stitching somebody's design and you see them, show them your stitching because they will just be buzzing from it. Um, it's just the best thing in the world uh, if you see that. Right. I'm not going to... Oh, no, I am going to say a few more. A few more thanks to people who brought specific things. Um, there were... I was on a great table. I was on a table with Kerry from Roxy Flosco and Kelly from Cosford Rice Stitchery and Laura from Cotton and Clay uh, with uh, Sarah, Susan... Susan, you see, I told you I can't remember things. Still haven't got HRT. Hoping to see the GP again next week and sort that out. Uh, Susan and Freya and Lisa, who's from Germany. And we had great table gifts, but also other people brought gifts as well. I, I'm not going to attempt to go through all the things that people gave me um, because there's just so many and they were so great. But some specific things. The legend that is Hazel uh, had brought these little frog pin cushions for several people um and mine also came with a project bag which i haven't got to hand uh but that was my little pink and green frog uh so thank you hazel um sarah from so me sarah uh she'd mentioned in her videos that she was making table gifts and she made one or two extras and i got one of the extras and i love it i love it look at the fabric, I'm going to put it this way around so you can see, look at the fabric on this bag. It's all dressmaking and rolls of cloth and tape measures. I just, I love the fabric. Um, and it's also got this little tape measure charm on there. I have sorted out all my stuff. After I filmed last time, I sorted everything out. So this doesn't now contain the things that it did when Sarah gave it to me. There was floss and there was chocolate um and some wonder clips and i feel like there was something else that i now can't remember um but anyway i i particularly love the pouch and the little bits in it were lovely uh, but this is the really special thing so sarah, sarah um i'm sure everyone on your table loved getting these it's one of those designs i don't know i've got stuff in it so it might show that yeah exactly i open it everything falls out but you it sort of opens up completely flat so it works really well if you want to put it on the table um next to you while you're stitching and then it zips up into a little bag and it's so lovely and i i really enjoy that meeting sarah was one of my favorite things uh, at the weekend um just you know it's all fabulous and you can talk to anyone about anything because you're all stitchers and you've all got so much in common um but i really love there were just one or two moments where conversations shifted to real things and you were like yeah this is someone who i actually want to be proper friends with or am proper friends with and there was one really lovely chance uh with sarah and noreen uh, and also hannah for part of that time as well which i i just really enjoyed that time together and i hope we can do more of that at some point right so that was from sarah uh this was lisa who's on our table who made everyone these beautiful patchwork bags there was stuff in here there was a lint roller there was sweeties i can't remember what else there might have been um but the bag itself it's always the things that people have made isn't it that was just lovely um so thank you so much for that lisa i did take part in the smalls exchange i completely failed uh to take video footage of mine before i gave it away but mine went to julie who is not on floss tube although i think sometimes watches my floss tube and was kind enough to let me take photos after she'd unwrapped it so this was mine it is um i do actually i do want to tell you a little bit about this it is stitched on 56 count fabric from coffee car fabric um i think i bought a quarter because that's what megan was selling i've got a lot of that left turns out when you stitch on 56 count you don't need very much fabric um and i stitched it with the soissophine 
Um, so I've been trying over the summer various things to, to see what I could use. And I finally got to a combination of, of thread and uh, needle that worked for me on the 56 count. And you may also remember over in an earlier video this summer, I showed a few cross stitch books that I'd uh, acquired from a friend, including the little DMC embroidered alphabet book which I also included in the Smalls Exchange because I thought, well, actually, I'm going to do a sampler theme. So I think whoever gets that will really enjoy having that book. And I've seen it and I've loved it, but I don't need to own it. So I gave that away and some other sampler theme goodies from Northumberland Sampler House. And I put it, I decided uh, that the wrapping could be one of the little sampler house, Northumberland sampler house bags. So that would really clearly signal it would be a sampler. So I stitched a number of the motifs and using the alphabets from the DMC book, I just designed this little spot motif sampler. I bought the frame in a charity shop for three pounds. So that determined how big the chart was going to be. And I really enjoyed stitching it. I couldn't do loads. Like, you know, I would do maybe half an hour, by the time I got to about three quarters of an hour, I'm like, okay, I have to, I have to stop now and do something else. But, but it was fun, and 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 I'm pleased to have done it, and I'd like to try some more. Um, I don't think I've got with me, unless it's in here, but I don't think it is. Um, there was a lady there. No, it's not. Uh, called Zuzana, who I want to say is from Croatia, but I might have remembered that wrong. Um, and she was offering people sort of introductory uh, materials if they wanted to try tiny stitching. And she had a pack of Invisifil, which I had looked at because I'd heard people recommend that for the 56 count. But it was always really expensive and you could only buy it in packs rather than individual reels and whatever. But she really kindly made me a little floss card and wrapped some of each of the six colours in the pack that she had onto it. And they are absolutely my colours. So the Swassophene I have is lovely. I, I bought some in pinks and some in greens, and there's a bit of purple in there. And, you know, that's fine. I, I will definitely use it. But this was, you know, bright neon yellow and turquoise and green and lovely. So thank you, Susanna, for the Invisifil and your time in making that little pack for me and she wrote on it i have got it um stashed very carefully i just haven't brought everything out for this uh she wrote on it you know the sort of pack number and name so that i can easily find it again if i decide i want more and that sort of thing so that was really generous um so that was the smalls exchange i gave the smalls exchange i received was from fiona fiona i want to say ivory stitch ivory stitch don't know anyway she and i have chatted a little bit on instagram before so it was really nice uh, to meet her and this is the smalls exchange uh that i received um i have looked at i think it's called summer sweets from some company that i can't remember um so anyway i i think it's lovely the bird with the strawberries and then the bird on the beehive and all of these things it's definitely something i would not have stitched um and that's the point of the smalls exchange isn't it i think you know to to give something away that i really enjoyed stitching but isn't really my style and i wouldn't like have on my wall and to receive something that i personally wouldn't have stitched but actually i really like so i haven't quite decided where this is going to go it's a pillow um it's a little bit bigger than the places where i normally would display a small pillow so I need to find so it might go out in my sewing room rather than in my house. Um, and that came with some lovely goodies as well, uh, which I can't remember, but they were lovely. That's, that's all I have to say about that. Fiona, I really appreciated them. Please don't think that my forgetting is a sign that I didn't. It's a sign that I am menopausal and can't remember things. Um, but anyway, so I have that. Uh, I think... Well, we'll go through and we'll discover. What I've basically done, because I can't cope with organising things at the moment, I've just got piles and I'm just going to work through the piles and some of them will be finishes and some of them will be starts and some of them will be whips and some of them will be plans and we'll discover as we go along. So one of the things uh, that Marie had organised for this year's Stitch in London was a book of seven charts for Christmas ornaments. She'd invited uh, designers who were at last year's retreat 
to submit a design for this and send her the models so she could take photos and display them and she produced a beautiful booklet. This is mine. This is Medieval Manger. Uh, so as soon as she started talking about that, I was like, I, do you know, I'd really like to do another medieval chart. I've got another one that's in the works, but I, I don't know when I'll get to that. I'd like to see a little small medieval one. And obviously there are lots of medieval uh, illustrations of the nativity. So that's what I started looking for. And I saw the one that this was inspired by. I'll put a picture of the actual thing here. And the thing that I immediately loved when I saw this were the expressions on the animals' faces. Just the side eye that they are giving is everything. So obviously to make it fit on a, an ornament sized chart, I, I moved a lot of stuff around. So what we've got is just the baby Jesus, the donkey and the ox. And to give the ornaments in the book a sort of coherence, we agreed between us a palette uh, of a green, a gold and a red. Uh, they were all from Gentle Arts. And that at least half of your chart uh, would be in those colours. You didn't have to use all of those colours and obviously you could add other colours. So uh, the, that's why the baby Jesus is in the green, basically. Because I had lots of places I could use the red and the gold, um, but not really the green. And I did want to include it and I needed a colour for this to make it at least half of the chart. The blue that I've used is, I think it's called Presidential Blue, and that is also from Gentle Art. And I do think the variegation on that is is really worth it. The other colours I added were DMCs, the, the sort of animal colours, basically, um, to make uh, the donkey and the ox. So that is Medieval Manger. Uh, it was available for purchase at the retreat in a physical copy. Uh, Marie, I know, um, still has some physical copies that are going to be available for purchase. And I think there may, I can't remember whether there was going to be a PDF one as well. Um, so I don't know where you can purchase this right this second, but it will certainly be available for sale. Um, and I will let you know when I know exactly the details of that. Um, I am wondering about doing, and it won't be for this Christmas, a couple of other medieval ornaments because I think I really liked doing this. I think you could have a medieval uh, Mary and you could have a medieval Magi as long as, as well as the medieval manger. So watch this space. Um, this was stitched. I did end up having to stitch this twice. I think this is on 18 count, although it might be 20 count, Ada, I can't remember. And I initially stitched it with one strand of floss, but actually it really needed the two strands to give it the proper sort of full rich colours that I certainly associate with medieval imagery. <coughs> um, and then it's just backed on a couple of layers of foam board so it's really light. Um, I put felt on the back, glued this gold trim around the edge and it got a little red hanging ribbon so it was an easy easy finish and uh, I'm really really proud of that uh, so that's medieval manger uh, so the chart that I designed for last year's Stitch in London this um, hasn't been available since but it is going to be I am just going to do a quick re-chart of it so that this says stitching along here so that it's more generic and obviously it won't have the date um, and then that will be available uh, in the Etsy shop as well from I guess probably from the beginning of next year all the four seasonal jacks will also be available then the winter jack no the autumn jack uh, is currently available for free on my Instagram page. So do, do go and download that if you'd like. They will, I think, all be sold as separate charts rather than a bundle. So uh, even if you haven't got the others, it will be worth your while downloading the autumn one while it is still free. Also, I want to just put here, somebody had stitched the autumn jack and I cannot remember their Instagram name, but uh, I will put it across the screen. Um, had stitched the autumn one 
rather than in the sort of um, colour blocks that I've done all the charts in, just in in a much wider range of colours. And it looks absolutely gorgeous, I think. And there's no reason why you have to stick with my sort of colour uh, theme. Mine are vaguely red, white and bluish. Um, but with slight seasonal variations in choosing the reds and the blues. Um, but there's no reason why you have to stick to that. And actually, one of the things I love about the Union Jack design is it's such a strong design. It's such a, a, a strong geometrical graphic image that you really can play around with it a lot and still see what it is. So, you know, things like uh, the hoops on this, you know, if I just showed you the, the blue bit of that, you would really struggle to see that that was a triangle. But on this, you can see immediately that's part of the Union Jack. It just it just holds its its own really well. And so even with that that sort of uh, playing around with colours, it really works. So uh, that's just a little bit of update on that. While we're on this, do you know what? I'm going to talk a little bit about two other charts. So Stitch Survive Thrive, um, I talked about previously, this was part of the Stitches Against Cancer collaboration it was only available during october if you donated during october and haven't yet downloaded your charts i think you've got a couple of days maybe i think today might be the last day mm. when you're watching this you might not have any more time anyway if you haven't downloaded your charts go and see if you can download them because you'll need to do it really quickly um or you may be out of time already sorry um so I'm trying to just work out exactly what I want to do with this. I don't want to sell it uh, in my Etsy shop for profit. Um, I could just give it away as a freebie, but I'm I'm sort of thinking what I might do is put it in the Etsy shop with a clear note on it saying that uh, any sales of this will go probably to Macmillan Care because that's the U UK charity that was part of the original fundraiser. Um, you know, it will be the amount that I receive. So Etsy will have charged VAT and fees and that sort of thing. But the amount that I receive for any sales of this, I could donate to Macmillan Care. That's sort of what I'm thinking of doing. But let me know in the comments if you've got a better idea um, for what you think I might do with the chart uh, for Stitch Survive Thrive. It will definitely be available in some way but I haven't quite worked out what. And I'm saying all of this will happen. None of this will happen very quickly. Um, the next two or three weeks are really busy and I'm really struggling to, you know, cope with life in general at the moment. Uh, December is a lot quieter, so I'm hoping that I'll get lots of these things sorted out in December, some of which may go live in December or may wait till January to actually do it. I'll see where I'm at with things. So anyway, that's Stitch Survive Thrive. And thank you so much if you did donate to that fundraiser. I think we raised like maybe $4,000, something like that. So that felt really uh, worthwhile to be part of. The other chart that's still available uh, is Nuts. That is in the Forest Friends Stitchy Goodness zine. That is available until November the 17th, I think. Um, and I will put the links below, uh, you get 12 patterns. These are for profit, not for um, charity, but 12 patterns from a range of designers. There's a really great mix of styles and, and animals. I super love, this is obviously another medieval inspired squirrel. Um, so at the moment, that's the only place you can buy that. At some point, it, again, that will be available separately from me, but not anytime soon. So if you're wanting to stitch it this season, you'll need to buy the magazine. So uh, that's those. Now, uh, there has been some stitching. There has been some mislaid stitching. So at the retreat, I mean, I hardly did any stitching at all. Let me tell you about what I stitched at the retreat. So this was one of the freebie patterns that came in our sort of retreat bag. Charlie really likes this one. Anyway, this was from Chloe, Girl with the Gavel Stitches. Hello, Chloe. 
um she had on the first day she had a, a vendor store selling her charts but she also had the the sort of actual original vintage pin cushion um you can see not in great condition but the stitching in reasonably good condition and then her stitched version of it the chart comes oh, let me see if there's a picture of the other bit she yeah there we go so she also charted this version of it so you could do this stitching on the 2023 instead of the birds or you could do both because the whole thing is designed to be like a mattress style pincushion like a uh, like a box almost and there are charts for the sort of side panels that would go around that and then the idea was that you would do the birds on one side and the stitch in London on the other side so I thought it was super cute and if you look at that border so I my initial thought let's show on this one it's a bit clearer is oh that's a very geometric kind of border with the the triangles and I think particularly because there's such a strong contrast on on sort of Chloe's version between the dark and the light slightly less so on the original that was what I was like oh it's a very triangular geometric border but I didn't really want to stitch it in the blues I brought lots of pink and green threads with me for something else I thought I might start which I didn't and I said like, actually I think that would look really nice in pink and green and then as soon as I started stitching it, I'm like oh this is a floral border of course it should be in pink and green anyway you notice I'm not showing you my stitching on this I got let me tell you what I did I did I got as far as across the top border and a little bit down the side I did do more stitching than that. I just had to do a lot of unpicking as well. Yeah, it was bad. I think on the Sunday, I did four stitches in total. It was bad. There were reasons why, but nonetheless. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you notice I'm not showing you my stitching. That's because I left my stitching behind. So about, you know, three or four days after the retreat, Marie was posting in the Facebook group and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and anyone on tables whatever 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 uh you know leave this behind and I'm like no I wasn't on those tables but that's mine <laughs> so you know just leaving my belongings all over the place it wasn't the worst thing I left behind I left my kindle in the hotel room um long-term viewers I think I've probably talked about it on here but certainly long-term uh, people who know me in other places know that I have a history with losing kindles uh it is on the way back to me but slowly um anyway so it, it's very sweet and I do want to finish it and I will do but obviously I haven't worked on it since because I have not had it in my possession honestly the thing I had thought I might stitch on at the retreat because I thought really carefully what you need for retreat stitching is something that doesn't require a lot of thinking and doesn't require tiny stitching that's what I need so I've been working on and I've shown you this before I think the sort of spool ribbon that's on, I think it's on 28 count, so it's quite big and it's monochrome and the motifs repeat and it's quite easy. So I thought I would stitch on that and I'd taken, well, I, the chart for it is on my iPad, so that was easy. And I'd taken the floss and I had not taken the actual stitching. So I didn't work on that, honestly. honestly. I Anyway, but I have finished that. I've got a fully finished object. So this is this. This is what I had planned for it to be. So I got this wooden spool, which is a scissor holder. I mean, you know, it's a spool, but it can be used as a scissor holder. And then this was uh, a gift from Fiona, who did my Smalls Exchange. Um, I think there was some in the Smalls Exchange, and I think I also got one from her as a sort of generic gift that was being given to everyone. And I can't remember which was which. But anyway, she had these beautiful counting pins. Uh, can we see that? Yeah. So beautiful candle beans, and obviously this was the perfect colour for this. And then while I was in Amsterdam, one of the things I bought was this ribbon, and it is a bit wide, but I put a tuck in on the back. I wanted something that was going to cover the back of my stitching, but also just give it a little bit of prettiness. And so this is the the finished thing. So I I really enjoyed uh charting this and stitching this um with the way the the patterns go into each other so the hearts the houses the birds and then the alphabet and then into some stars and so then it's just stitched hand stitched here uh to hold it in place and you can wrap it up and um the counting pin you can put it in sort of as far around as you like i like to have it with a little bit 
um, sort of loose so that you can see the design going through. There we go. Um, and then I took the leftover thread that I had from that scene. I think this is licorice red from Classic Colour Works. Um, so it's not massively variegated, but it's a really pretty colour and made a little tassel to go on the scissors. So I'm really chuffed with that. Um, I am going to do another one in a different colour. I think maybe purple. Not sure. And, and different designs on there. And then I may or may not release these little charts. Um, I think what I might do, because I, I, there's not very much to it. I don't feel really good about charging for that. But what I might do is, is sort of chart up enough for, you know, a much longer section um, and then release that um, so that people could, you know, pick and choose. Because of the way these sections fit together, they're all along diagonals. And so you can sort of um, mix and match uh, with those as well. So that's really pleasing. Uh, so I did that when I got back from the retreat, when I had done some tidying up and, and then found my, my piece that I'd started working on. So that's good. What else have I done? Oh, this is this is a, a sad little one, really. So the lovely couple at my church who were expecting their first baby and uh, various complications happened and the baby was born at 23 and a half weeks and didn't survive very long. Um, and the baby is called Miriam. So this is what I have stitched so that... Um, I think there's something really important about acknowledging that Miriam is a person, that she has a name, that she existed, that we can talk about her um, and that she is beloved by them and by God and that she is blessed uh, to be their child and to be with God. It's really hard. They obviously are devastated and it's all awful. Um, so I think I'm just going to get a little hoop and finish that up and give that to them. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, it felt like the, I'm sure they will have all sorts of, you know, cards and messages and sympathy, but from my friends who've lost babies in, you know, similar sorts of situations, there's something about needing a, a sort of permanence of her and they did meet her and I'm sure they have photos and all of that, but, you know, just a, a sort of little, you know, in 20 years time, that we that we still have Miriam, that she was still part of their lives and uh, other people's lives as well. So uh, that's that. That is not a design that is going anywhere. That's just a thing that I um, sketched up for that specific situation. What have we got here? Please enter your pin. I'm sure everyone knows this, the freebie chart from Puntini Puntini. Can we all spot my error? I'm not taking it out. I'm leaving it there. Uh, the E and the R are in entirely the wrong place. I don't care. I'm leaving it. What I'm thinking of doing I've for a while, and I have been talking about it, and that's why I've finally started on this. I've been talking about doing a, a whole lot of sort of stitchy themed uh, charts and smalls. And I did wonder, I've got this piece that I have no idea what it is. Um, but I did wonder about just stitching a whole lot of things on here and making this like a, a sort of patchwork spot sampler kind of thing. I don't know. Or I might do them all on here, but then cut them up. And so then they'll be sort of matching smalls. But I don't know if matching is really my style. I don't know. Anyway, I was just like... At the point where I had lost um, the stitching that I'd done at the retreat and the stitching I meant to take the retreat. And obviously I'd finished the smalls exchange, which is what I've been working on before the retreat. I was like, I have nothing to stitch now. Obviously I have my gecko rouge, but I was not in a state. Right now I can't do it. I just, I don't have the brain power for it. Bring on the HRT. So I'm like, I need to start something. I'm going to start one of my stitching smalls. So I started that one. We'll see. And then when I was feeling a little bit more compass mentis, I started this. It's 
It's not going to focus. Are we going to focus? No, we're not going to focus. Let's see. Let's just see what happens if I put this behind it and try and hide me. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. This is A Dream of a Winter Garden by Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery. The um, freebie chart, uh, in fact, kit that we got at the retreat was from Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery. And it is adorable. It's a boat with uh, sailors on it and dogs. And I think I will sit to it one day. I, you know, I don't always want to sit to everything, but I think I would like to sit to that. But I've been, I bought this one last year and I... Or maybe at the beginning of this year and i've really wanted to stitch it it is charted in pinks and greens mine are different pinks and greens from the chart but it, it's so pretty uh, so this is the top panel that i've started on and this is quite good stitching for if you're not really that with it you know those diagonal rows and you can always just do the straight lines of the borders um and that sort of thing if that's what you need to i am stitching this in a verisoir and i am loving it so I've got several of Arisois in pinks and greens. These are the colours. I don't know. Oh, no. I was going to see if I could show you the spools, but apparently not. I can just throw them around. I'm going to show you here, but I... No, it's not that one. It's that one. Um, let's do it like this. So these are the ones uh, that I am using at this point. I think I might need to see if I can get one or two other greens or sort of a pale aqua or something like that when we get to the, the main section of the chart. I don't think I've got quite enough uh, variety, but they are absolutely lovely. This is not showing you the full glory of their colour, to be honest. It's a bit of a grey, miserable day here and there's not a lot of good natural light anyway i am really enjoying stitching with those i think they make my stitching look way better than it really is and um it's super pretty so that is my other start so things that i was going to show you by way of charts is where i'm at next on the pile um, so I said I was at a table with Kelly from Crossword Ride Stitchery. As a table gift, she gave us all a chart. Isn't that so generous? I thought so. I thought it was so kind. So this is a uh, happy, a jolly happy soul is what this is. And you can see how it's got these little snowman scenes in all of the letters. I am undecided about whether I'm going to stitch it. I might. I've got something in mind that I might stitch it for. Um, but I'm not sure. It's also possible it might go in my 500 subscriber giveaway. Watch this space. But thank you, Kelly. That was really generous. Uh, this was a freebie. This was, I did buy it. Did buy. I did pick up a couple of other things from the actual freebie table. But, uh, this was a freebie from Jenny, who had just brought a load of things to give away. And there was more than there was space for on the freebie table. And I just really loved this alphabet section in the middle of there. I think as part of my stitching small theme thing, I think that's really pretty. Um, I'm not sure I would stitch the outside border of that. I also really like this little beehive thing. And I think if one were doing a, a sort of bee themed uh, small, that would be super cute. Um, but but it was this that really caught my eye and i'm like yeah i really want to stitch that uh so thank you jenny for that the other thing to mention by way of charts is this plum street samplers float so i stitched as you will remember uh sting like a bee from heartstring samplery and this is the companion chart from plum street samplers they were you know sort of designed to be a pair this was um uh, I swapped that with Justine from Justine Stitching. Uh, so she now has my copy of Sting and I have her copy of Float. Uh, we both put ours on the brag table and I'm going to see if I can put a photo here to show you the two of them together. So she had stitched Float on 40 count ballet slipper from Fox and Rabbit and I had stitched mine on 32 count up in the attic from Fox and Rabbit. And when we put them together, we were both like, actually, that looks really good. And you know that Liz Matthews child that everyone's been going on about, 
with the sort of blue fabric for one half and the cream fabric from the other half and how cool that is and we were both like actually we could do that on this so i had stitched mine and i hadn't yet cut the fabric and there was plenty um so i just cut mine in half there and gave her uh that so she can stitch her version of sting on the fabric that i used for sting and she is going to send me the fa the other half of the fabric that she used for float so i can stitch my version of float on that and then we'll have effectively matching pieces i mean it won't be out they won't be identical partly because uh, i certainly haven't used all the cool full colors and also because my bees are none of them in the right place and i don't really care so you know hers might actually match the chart and mine definitely won't but i i really like it was really fun justine was another of the people that was really lovely um to meet properly and um she and her friend julie both did the finishing class that i did um on the sunday and that was lovely um so yeah so i'm excited to do the rest of that but i i can't do it obviously until i get the fabric it's quite nice not feeling any pressure to do it because i can't um i did teach the finishing class at uh Stitch and Island. there were three michelle did one from mama love cgb on perforated paper ornaments and yaz from yasmin's made with love did one on sort of trims for pillow finishes and i did one that was definitely the most challenging uh on <laughs> making a stitchy notebook that I had six people, I think that's right, sign up to do it. And everybody made a notebook and they were all stunning. It was hard. You had to put in about a dozen cross stitches, I think. They are the hardest, most fiddly, most annoying cross stitches you will ever do. But I was like, I think we can do this because we do all know what a cross stitch is and what it should look like at the end. So we know what we're aiming for. And there were one or two people, Justine was, with somebody who um, just made a, a counting mistake that made, meant she had to unpick quite a lot and that took a while. But it was really worth it. I think everyone was so chuffed with what they had made and you know they took away instructions so that they could do it again. So Stitchy Rach, uh, she was somebody else that was really fun to meet. Rachel from Stitchy Rach, she decided that although she had done the stitching for the, the freebie chart that I'd sent that people could use for it, I think everybody had actually, which is amazing, um, that she was just going to use fabric rather than her stitch piece um, to make the one in the class so that she could have one that was a sort of learning project and then hopefully do a better one. Rachel, I hope you made that one that you were going to for your daughter's birthday. Because, you know, you have no excuses now for, oh, I can't finish things. You can finish things, lady. Um, she finished first and, and was like, teacher's pet star of the class so you know don't let her tell you she can't finish things because she really can um so that was really fun i again you'll notice i'm not showing you mine because that is still lost i don't know where it is so i had one that i had done that was the model for the chart and then i was sort of halfway through a second one which i took with me so that i could show people exactly how i was doing the stitching um on that as we went and I haven't finished that I don't know if I will to be honest I think Charlie stood on it and it's all a bit muddy and it's probably not worth it at this point that didn't have any cross stitching on that one either so I think it's fine um but there were some really beautiful ones that other people finished um and I hopefully you have been seeing some of those uh, that I've been putting here while I've been talking to you about that. I think that little to-do list freebie chart is going to be a permanent freebie because it's so tiny and so nothing, but it is a really fun little stitch to do. So I think that will be a freebie to download from my uh, Instagram bio when I get around to putting it there. Right, I think that is all the stitching I have to show you and talk to you about. I have joined two uh, smalls exchanges that will be coming up uh, before too long. One is a Stitch in London Christmas Smalls Exchange and one is part of the Across the Pond um, Smalls Exchange and, and at least one of my partners is overseas. So I do want to get those stitched reasonably quickly and sent off. After Stitch in London, I had booked and hadn't quite realised they were right next to each other, but it made for quite a nice uh, few days of uh, not thinking about work. A two-day course um, at a place called Little Heath Barn Studio. I'll put the link below. They run all kinds of uh, classes with a lady called Tansy Hagen. Um, she does 
she's an architect actually I did not know that she teaches on the landscape architecture course at Sheffield um, but she's an artist and I've done uh, one of her online courses before so I was really excited to go and do an in-person course with her and the course was we did two things we made our book covers I'll talk to you about that in a moment but you can see it's just got a sort of slip cover there and then we also she'd brought for us each of us the sort of inside of part of our sketchbook and we worked on watercolour exercise so the whole course was called Little Book of Colour and these were using uh, Tansy's own handmade paints I mean I think she does the formula and her husband now basically does all of the uh, paint making this is not Tansy's paints this is some other paints that I have I've been working on when I go home. This was painting to music. We were listening to Swan Lake and just doodling along. Um, this sort of thing is very much what she was encouraging us to do, play with colour mixing and recording. She does. She has another course which is on thumbnails, which we didn't really get to, but I, I put those there because I want to remind myself to do that. And then at the back, she's very keen on don't waste your, your watercolours. So this page is just using up leftovers that were in the palette that I'd already mixed rather than just washing them away. Um, so that was super um, relaxing doing the watercolour bit. For the book covers, we started off, I arrived late as usual, and what we were doing was unpicking bits of old garments and they were all in sort of sludgy greys and browns and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awful. Um, but then what we did was paint them uh, with acrylic paint. So you can't really tell at all what colours they were underneath. Now, some of them, let's just have a look. There are bits of fabric like here. You can see that was a gingham check under there. And it was, you know, a pretty strong contrast between navy and white. And the paint didn't cover that completely. You could have put more paint on or this one where there's a stripe. I, I've no idea what original colours that one was. Um, but you can sort of see some remnants of it. But also, because we've been doing the unpicking, we got some of the original shapes. So this piece here was a collar, a neckline on a shirt, and it had this lovely curve to it. And that was, for me, I was like, okay, I want to use that, and I want to make something with a lot of curves in it. Um, and so that's where I sort of ended up going. So we, on the first day, we were just painting the fabrics, um, and you could put some texture in as you were painting them and that sort of thing. But basically you were making the, the sort of foundation layer. And the second day we uh, ironed our fabrics in whatever arrangement we wanted onto some interfacing. And then we started embellishing with uh, some free motion embroidery. You had to do that all over to make sure everything was properly fixed down. Adding some additional things. I've got quite a lot of sari silk uh, on mine, but also other little snippets of fabric and then using Posca paint and Sharpie to really add in some uh, detail onto that. I enjoyed it enormously. There's a backing fabric uh, just to line the whole thing so it's not completely full of all the ends from your machine embroidery and then you just the fabric once it's been um, painted and dried in that sort of way is pretty sturdy um, it's it's sort of flexible but strong and it doesn't fray so all we did to make the actual slip cover was just zigzag along the edges and zigzag the folds at the top and the bottom and that's my little book of colour so that was really fun right I don't think I have anything else to talk to you about I've got lots of ideas in my head that there's nothing to show you and um I don't think you want to listen to me talk for another hour and a half about nothing incoherently. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, do tune in again next time. It, I don't know when it will be. I think it's very unlikely it will be in two weeks time, given what that weekend looks like. Might be, but I would be surprised. Um, so I don't quite know when I'll be back. I have got... Oh, here's the thing I wanted to say about um, Stitch in London. So <laughs> Marie organises all these sort of games and raffles and all this sort of thing. And one of them was bingo. And there were three prizes. There was the first row, the first person to get two rows, the first person to get three rows. Anyway, when we got to three rows, I had bingo. 
So I shouted it because I shout quite loudly, loudly. But I knew that the person sitting next to me had exactly the same card on me. We'd, we'd looked and we'd compared and realised exactly the same numbers. So I knew that she also had bingo at that point. And I knew what the prize was. And I knew it was something I didn't really want. It was the historical sampler company advent calendar. I'm sure it is wonderful. I'm sure it is. But I looked at it before and I thought, mm, you know, historical sample companies sometimes have things that I really love and sometimes it's not really my style. But also, more crucially, I already have the Evertote Roxy Flosco Modern Folk Embroidery Advent Calendar. And I definitely am more excited about that. So I didn't really want to win it. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just bring this person who's sitting next to me, Freya, and say, well, she's won it so she can have it. And then suddenly three other people appeared and was like, well, actually, I've got bingo too. Actually, I've got bingo too. And I'm like, oh, that didn't really go how I planned. Anyway, so then we had to do a drawing. Um, you know, Marie checked, obviously, all our numbers and we all had bingo. So then she, we all did a drawing and I went first and it was whoever had the highest number. And I had 104. I didn't really know what the, the sort of range was, but people were like, oh, that sounds quite high. I'm like, OK, it's quite high. And, you know, the next one was lower and the next one and the next one. And then we got around to the last person and they had 113 so they won and um i just want to say because a lot of people are like oh we really think you were robbed because I, I mean i did shout first definitely and so in a bingo game that is what counts but um i sort of didn't really want to win it i think i'd have felt bad if i'd won it and didn't really want it so it did go to someone who really really wanted it and so that's what i was glad about i had thought it might go to freya and i'm sorry that it didn't end up that way <laughs> But it did go to someone else who really wanted it. So that was all good. Um, I don't think I am the sort of person who will be doing daily updates on my progress on the advent calendar. I could be wrong because at the moment, December is relatively clear in my diary. And so I might, but I'm not promising a sort of every day during Christmas, during December video. Last year I did... A sort of every day from Christmas, did I do Christmas to New Year or Christmas till Twelfth Night? I think it might have been Christmas till Twelfth Night, 12 days of Christmas. I think I did, didn't I? Because that's right, I did a little, um, I really enjoyed doing those little 12 days of Christmas um, uh, sort of cartoony intros. They did take forever and they weren't brilliant, but I really enjoyed it. Um, so I don't know, I might I might try and do something again that time of year. I think the thing which I will do, by the way, just... just um, to let you know in advance is I will do a live on Christmas Day. Do let me know in the comments. I have done a YouTube live and I have done an Instagram live. Which of those you prefer? And if there's a obvious reason to choose one over the other, let me know. Um, but I think it was just an hour or so on Christmas Day. And I think a lot of people just need a little break from Christmas, don't they? Either, you know, you've got an absolutely full-on house full of screaming children and fighting relatives, or, you know, just just full-on being happy. And you say, like, I just need to go and spend an hour in a room that's quiet and talk about stitching. Um, or you're somebody like me, whose Christmas this year is going to be very quiet. Uh, mine sort of alternate depending whether um, my brother and his family are around but this year they're going to the in-laws so it'll just be me and mum and dad uh, for lunch and then you know I won't stay there for all that long um, so it's nice to have a fun thing to look forward to as well so I think I will plan to do uh, an hour's live stitch with me on Christmas day um, last time I think I can't remember five till six maybe might be I can't remember I will have to think and let you know about time again if you have a particular yeah maybe it was a bit later I can't remember if you have a particular uh time that would work or not work um or suggestions about how to do that uh do you let me know in the comments right I think that's it uh thank you so much for watching hopefully this is at a level which I can upload and edit and um what do, I, what do you say at the end of videos? I can't even remember. Like, subscribe, tell everyone about it. Come back next time. Thank you. <laughs>